Okay, so question four. Use substitution x equals one third of sine theta to find the exact value of this. Um, okay, it looks horrible to start with, doesn't it? 1 minus 9x squared all to the power of 3 over 2 dx. But we know what we do with substitution. To start with, we know we're going to have to get rid of the dx. And to get rid of the dx, we need to know what dx, what the link is between x and theta. So we're going to find, given that x equals a third sine theta, what is dx by d theta? Well, this, this, we talked about this a few moments ago. Differentiate sine theta. We get cos theta. Oh, well, hang on. Should it be minus cos theta? Yeah. Thanks for not responding there. No, we shouldn't. Great, because uh, the CD music system means that cos differentiates to minus sine. <laughs> but sine just goes to cos. Glad you were on board with that. Right, so we've, we've got this. Now we're ready to, well, we're nearly ready to do our substitution. If we're going to do a substitution here, we've got these limits of 0 and a sixth. Actually, we need to change them as well. So if x is 0, if x is 0, then a third sine theta is 0. So theta must also be 0. If x is a sixth, this requires a little bit more thought, but not much. Uh, we've got one third sine theta is a sixth. We rearrange that. Well, multiply both sides by three, and you get sine theta is a half. If sine theta is a half, then theta is. I have a six, and I was leaving that left to see what people would say, because you made the right choice, didn't you, Chris? Because you could have said 30, but that wouldn't have been a good move to say 30, because because we're doing calculus with this stuff, we have to be in radians if we don't have a choice at the point. So we have to say the theta is pi by six. Right, we're ready to do something with this. Our integral now becomes the integral from zero to pi by six, because we've replaced the limits of 1 over 1 minus, now in there we've got 9x squared, 9 times a third of sine theta squared. Well, I'm, I want to go straight in with this. A, a third of sine theta, when you square it, is a ninth of sine squared theta. 9 lots of that will just be sine squared theta in there. That whole thing is still to the power of 3 over 2. Now again, you've got loads of choices about how you finish off this substitution. There are some people who, who rearrange this expression here so that it says dx equals 1 third cos theta d theta. Okay, by splitting up the, the dx by d theta. If you want to do that, then that is fine. You're okay to do that. Replace dx by one third cos theta d theta and, and carry on from there. Other people like to go through this a little bit more step by step and say that actually what we're doing in here is we had a dx there. We don't want to, we don't want to change the value of what's here. So we can only multiply by 1 if we're going to multiply by anything. Let's choose to do that in the form of d theta over d theta. I'll put that there. In effect, we get the same thing, because we're now going to swap dx by d theta for 1 third cos theta. And that's going to go in that gap there. So it's, it's the same kind of arrangement either way you do it. So now we've got, well let's tidy up this, <coughs> this fraction a little bit. Look, this is 1 minus sine squared theta, which is cos squared, cos squared theta. Cos squared theta, well, we'll work through it one bit at a time. We've got cos squared theta to the power of 3 over 2. <coughs> dx by d theta, I'm swapping for 1 third cos theta. 
Bill now got defeated there at the end. This is actually that we're there, and if we can see it, you can go straight to the key bit of this, but we'll work through it one step at a time until, we, until we're all there. What have we got here? We've got cos squared theta, square rooted and then cubed. So that ends up with cos cubed theta on the bottom, doesn't it? 1 over cos cubed theta. Up here we've got a third cos theta, d theta. So actually, this cos theta on the top here, this cos cubed theta on the bottom here, have a common factor of cos theta, so we can cancel that down and leave ourselves with 1 over cos squared theta times a third p theta. Now 1 over cos squared theta is sec squared. Sec squared. So it's just the integral from 0 to pi by 6 of a third of sec squared theta theta. <laughs> Getting to that point feels really good, doesn't it? Because uh, you see that this substitution has turned it from something that looks a bit nasty into something that looks great. We know that to integrate sec squared theta you get tan theta. It's one of the standard integrals that we know about. So we're left with one third of tan theta between 0 and pi by 6. All that's left is to sub in those values, tan of pi by 6, your calculator will say, well it'll probably say root 3 over 3, won't it? If it's 1 over root 3 over root 3 over 3. So root 3 over 9, tan of 0 is 0. So the exact answer, and again it did want an exact value, the exact answer is root 3 over 9. There we are. Six marks. Quite a neat six marks.